So, hey guys, what's up? In this video, we're going to be photographing meteors in the night sky. So, right here I have my Canon T5i. This is going to be important, obviously. You need a camera. You're going to need DSLR, which gives you more options. It's possible with your phone, but very tr tricky. And you're going to need a lens, which has a wide aperture. Because the wider it is, the more light it'll be able to take in at once. And meteors go very quickly. So we need to take in that light really quickly. I have 3.5, which is pretty... It's not that big. But it'd be better if you had F, like 2.4 or something. But that's good. And also, this is very key. An intervalometer. This is going to do wonders for you. And make your life so much easier. I'll show you how to use it once you get inside. And this is the intervalometer. This is gonna help you out a lot. So here are the basic functions. We have our light here, which would make it better for you if you're outdoors. This is basically a power on button, but not really. I'll explain that later. This is our shutter. We can click this. Camera will take a picture. We hold it up here. It's gonna hold a shutter and we can close it. And I'll explain all of these functions right here on this little LCD display. So here we have delay. This is how long you want between each of your shots. So say you want like a shot for one second, then pause three seconds. This would be the pause three seconds. Long is how long you want your shutter to be open. Like you want to take a five second exposure but we're not going to need that or the delay because the delay is just unnecessary for us and the long we're going to do on the camera the interval is how often you want to take the picture so say you want it every second you want to take a picture and here we have the number you can have it like one time or multiple times we're going to have it set to infinite and here we have our sound option you're gonna want to turn that off. That's gonna drive you insane if you're staying outside. So, for the interval, we're gonna just keep it at one second. Even though it's not, it doesn't really matter. For the number, we're gonna select the center key right here. You can see it's flashing. Once it's flashing, you're gonna press the down key. Now we have all three, which is infinite. I'll take infinite amount of pictures. Did you hear that beep? That's really annoying. If we hit timer start stop, it'll do this whole function. And again, and it'll do that forever. Those beeps are really annoying. So what we're also gonna do is we're gonna go to here to this music icon, press the center button again, it's flashing, press down, and that's gonna stop our music. Now if we were to do it again, Shutter, shutter, and shutter. So that's going to show how to use the intervalometer, and that's going to take our pictures. Okay, so here we have our Canon T5i. Out here, I'm going to show you the settings, and I'm going to show you where to put the intervalometer. But first, we're going to do the intervalometer. So I'm just going to close this little view display. And then right here, you can see it has... The mic input and the little thing, which looks like our intervalometer. So you're just gonna open it. This is the mic, and that's for the head. The sorry, intervalometer. You can take your little headphone jack thingy, even though it's not a headphone jack. It's a different size, and you're just gonna want to plug it right into that hole, like so. And now this fits smug snugly, and we'll be able to use our intervalometer now. Now I'll show you the juicy part. The settings we're going to use for this shot. So you're just going to open display. Of course, you're going to want to turn the camera on. Okay, so now that we finally have our camera on, 
the camera, the phone wasn't working. So here we have manual. We also have our manual focus. And we have here is how long we're going to have a shot. I'm set up for one second and six milliseconds. That's a bit too short. You're going to have to mess with it because I have a bunch of light pollution here. And that's going to mess it up. You're going to want to be in an extremely dark spot for this. And as you can see, I have an insanely high ISO. This is because, as I mentioned earlier, the meteors come and go really quickly. Just like that in a second. And that, you want to capture all of that light. So for that, we have the high ISO. We have a wide aperture, as wide as my thing can go. It should be wider, though. And our one second and six milliseconds aperture. That is the long part of it. So we're just doing it on here. And now let's go outside and set it up. Okay, so now we're outside in the field. Basically just my backyard. So right here, we're gonna have our display. We're gonna turn it on again. So you can see right here, we have all of our settings from previous. Now we're gonna learn how to focus it. This is gonna be interesting. So, you're going to look at the sky. Right here, you won't be able to see it. But I have a clear sky with a lot of moon. But that's all right. You don't want any moon because that blows out the meteor. So, we're going to try and point it to the brightest thing in the sky. Not the moon, but the brightest star. So, here we are, we're in live view. And we're going to look for the brightest thing that we can see. You might not be able to see it, but like right there. Now I can now you can see it better. Right there. You can see a little thing twinkling. That is our star. So we're gonna zoom in on our camera. I'm just gonna tap right where I want it. We could make this a bit lower if we wanted to. But it looks perfect. Then you're going to want to zoom in again. And now. Right there. You can see our little star. Now you're going to want to adjust. The focus. So you can see as I'm adjusting it. The star is going in and out of focus. You want this thing. To be as sharp as you can. I mean my phone camera isn't too sharp. But as I can see it, it's perfect. So now we have our camera focused. That's a great step. And another tip you're going to want is you're going to want to have your intervalometer have rechargeable batteries because these run out of batteries quick. I have replaced them twice in the night. So right here we have our thing set up. We're going to take a picture really quick with our settings. And right here, you're going to see all of the stars. I'll pop up an image of it on the screen right now. But it's really nice. You can see more stars here than you can see in it with your eye. And as you can see, I have just a little tree right here. That's for composition. Just to make it look pretty. And you're just going to leave this outside. Have it continuously taking the shutter. And... You're just going to hope you're going to catch a meteor. You're probably going to have to replace the batteries of your camera and your intervalometer frequently. Not frequently, but once in the night at least. I had to do that. And this is a week or two weeks after the peak of the shower. And when I took the picture of the meteor. But I kind of procrastinated to record this and I haven't had a clear night to show you guys. So, that's how you take the meteors. More tips will be right here. Okay, so we just learned how to photograph meteors. This is a big deal. Because you can do so much with this. You can shoot the Milky Way, you can shoot stars, you can shoot stars moving. That's really cool. But meteors is a pretty good first step. So, some key things you'll want to keep in mind is the sky. This is the most basic one. You want your sky to be nice and clear, and no clouds. If there's a little bit, you can manage, but 
No clouds is always the best. Also, the moon. The moon is also pretty bad. Because if the moon is in your shot, it's going to light up the sky. And then your meteor might just blend in. It'll still be there, but your camera may not be able to photograph it. So, you want to keep the moon and the sky in mind. Two pretty important things. Also, you want to keep your battery in mind. Because your battery will run out pretty quickly because it's continuously taking shots. So will your intervalometer. So your camera battery is probably already rechargeable. So that's pretty good. But your intervalometer battery, that you're going to have to go through a lot. So I recommend investing in some nice, good quality rechargeable batteries. Just to save you money, it'll be good in the long run. And also, light pollution. This ties in with the moon and blowing out the meteor. Because if you live in the city where there's tons of light, then it's going to be pretty hard for you to catch meteors. I mean, I live in the suburbs, like an hour away from the city. So our sky is still pretty bright. It's not pitch black. But I was still able to catch some amazing meteors. If you really want to get the full experience though, you should go somewhere like a dark spot. I'll leave a website in the description where you can find national parks, which are really dark. And mostly the, s the west of the US, not like California, but the Midwest, that those are really dark because they don't have too many cities. So you might have to travel really far if you want to get amazing shots, but you can always do it from your backyard, like I did. Also, you want to want to keep in composition in your head, because if it's just the sky, I mean, getting a meteor is pretty cool and all, but it'll be so much better if you have something just to be in the foreground of it. That'll make it look amazing. Like some people have like a lake and trees and the Milky Way. I'll pop a picture of that right now. Those are really amazing, but you don't have to do that. This also ties in to where you want to point your camera. So, so most, most of the time, you can just put it anywhere in the sky and you'll get a meteor. But if you want to catch as many meteors as you can and you want to get the really bright ones that go like really quickly, for that you're going to have to find out where the radiant is or where the meteors seem to come out of. Like the Gemini meteor shower comes out of the constellation Gemini, and the Perseides meteor shower comes out of Perseus or Perseides. So you can use an app called Skyview Free on your phone and just point in the sky and it'll show you where you should catch your meteors. Also, focus is really important because since you're gonna be changing your batteries a lot, your focus might change if you hit the camera or anything. And a little difference can make a huge impact on your photo. So I'll throw up some pictures right now. The first one, this one was probably my best shot I've ever taken. It was amazing. The sky was clear. The trees were good. That one was good. But the second two, I hit the camera when I was changing the batteries. And the focus just went crazy. So focus really does matter. It's nothing you should skip over. Make sure you do it properly and correctly. That's hugely important. So, now you have everything you need to shoot a meteor. Don't get discouraged if you don't get any meteors from your first try, because in my first Persades meteor shower, it took me four days to get my first meteor. And even that one was so small, you couldn't even see it. So, you have to play around with your settings. But eventually, you'll get better and better getting better and even more exciting shots of your meteors. So, if you want some behind the scenes images or some behind the scenes videos on how these videos are made or when they're gonna come out, you can follow my Instagram, it's right here. And then, I'll see you next time. Goodbye!